What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. Today, we are gonna answer a big question that I get very often, what should I do when the bell rings at the very beginning of the fight? This is a great question because you don't wanna just run out and start bombing punches and get KO'd, but you also don't wanna be really timid and be running the whole time and set the wrong tone for the fight, one where you are overly defensive. So we're gonna look at one dozen of my fights. We're gonna look at the first 15 seconds and see if there are any common themes that help me win my fights that can help you guys win your future fights. Intro first guys, and then we'll get into all the fight footage. All right guys, one dozen fights, 15 seconds of each. Let's start off when we're looking at a fight in China. Hands are super high. Right away I come up with a fast punch. Low kick. Following up again with a low kick, low kick. Very aggressive, very aggressive start from me. If somebody put a gun to my head and say, describe the first 15 seconds of all your fights, I would go, oh my gosh, I'm done. I don't have an answer for you. And if somebody told me I came out that aggressive in a fight, I'd go, nah, probably not. That was a fairly aggressive approach. Why did I do it against this guy? I think what I had in mind was I have to come out and set the tone because this guy, if he gets his momentum, he gets his timing down, he's going to be a little more likely to be difficult to defeat. But the big key that you notice on a lot of these right from the first one is my hands are darn high. All right, now we're looking at Mosab Amrani, Glory World title fight. Hands are high, you can tell, right up to tempo level, no room for air, feeling it out, gauging the distance, usually utilizing those front kicks to make sure I'm getting that range down, not letting him walk straight in. So in that one, you notice I was considerably slower than the other one. Reason being, most likely, Mosab is a quick starter, and if you let him get in and you start brawling with him, that is gonna set the wrong tone for the fight. Plus, with his power, you don't wanna make a mistake. Me utilizing those front kicks, maintaining range, hollowing out, trying to stay outside of his punch range was very, very important. All right, next we are moving on to my fight with Shan in Italy. This was a world title fight for Bellator. Little glove touch. Hands are super high as always. Maintaining range but getting off to a quick start. You guys can tell very often I will throw single low kicks. I utilize these single low kicks in my fights because I find sometimes if I go from here to here to here, I throw a big hand combo and then I come with the kick, there's more chance of a mistake happening, more chance of a counter. So sometimes I just keep my hands here and I just blast out. I'm just looking for the reaction. Are they able to check the kick? And if so, what is the distance? I'm gauging distance when I throw single round kicks. Doesn't matter if it's the back or the front leg, it's still giving me a good idea of whether he's gonna be able to punch me from that low kick range, which will matter later in the fight for sure. Next up is another Bellator title fight. This one was a defense. I can tell you before we even start this video that I come up fairly fast in this one. I knew I had to. Not as aggressively maybe as the first video footage we watched. Moving around right away, trying to avoid those low kicks, fast punches trying to make sure right away that we go, okay, you know what? You're not gonna be able to dictate the pace. I am gonna dictate the pace. And that's something that I often recognize either needs to be done or not. Actually, thinking about that for a split second, it always needs to be done. It's just me deciding if I want to establish a fast paced fight or slow it down initially. But I'm always trying to take control right from the get go. Now here we're moving into the first 15 seconds with Kevin Ross. Right away, he's coming up strong and I am establishing, if you punch on me, I'm going to counter shot you. Get the kicks up really quick. Another kick, just trying to back him up. In that fight, once again, I'm quickly, quickly trying to establish that the fight is gonna play out my way. He wants to come out and apply a lot of pressure. I'm not gonna be the one to initiate it, but I'm also not going to shy away. So far, what I see as the overall theme is I'm coming out to stay safe. You will not see me drop my hands 
below tempo level, but the important part is that I am setting a precedent for the rest of the fight. If the guy is coming out aggressive, like Mosa Bamrani, I'm drawing back the pace, I'm keeping those front kicks, I'm maintaining range. If I have somebody who's more comfortable at this pace and they're gonna be picking away, like the very first footage I showed you, then right away I'm coming out fast. I'm coming out to establish that this will not be a relaxed fight. And as you just saw with Kevin, I don't really care if it's fast or slow. I'm just establishing if you come and you punch at me, I'm gonna tag you back. Every time you punch, you are gonna get hit for it. A lot of this is established pre-fight during training camp when we do our fight footage research. Let's move on to our next one. Against Lord Zilla, an absolute legend in Muay Thai. Comes out right away. He kicks me, I kick him back. Get that check off. Again, trying to get that low kick back. He's coming high with the kicks, I'm going low. Basically trying to establish that you cannot kick me without taking a low kick back. There's a level of respect in fighting, but sometimes you have to throw that out the door a little bit. Always maintain a high guard, of course, that's a level of respect, but don't let the guy dictate his own fight. Moving on here, this was my first, oops, sorry, second Bellator fight. Was not a title fight. Ooh, no glove touch, that's odd. Right away, that single low kick, which I talked about, I already mentioned it, a little bit more chill here. This guy's a little stronger. You can see I'm feeling him out a little bit more. And in that instance, that was back to sort of like Mosav, where I go, okay, we have a stronger opponent here. He's got a thicker build. He's probably going to hit harder and a little more caution and a little more distance is wise early on. Now from here, we are moving into my first Fight with Glory. This is a guy named Abdillah Esbiri. I knew he was like a dog. He just came up fast and hard, but if you let him do that, it was bad. You had to show him that you were gonna be able to fight back. So he's coming at me, but I'm coming right back, which is not normally a strategy I would take. A little leg catch, knock him down. Again, like I already said, guys, I would not have known what my exact strategy or style is when I go into the first 15 seconds of a fight, like knowing all of it, I wouldn't be able to tell you. But now that I'm looking at it, or not all the way through, but now that I'm getting a feeling for it, it's really a bit of variety and sort of catered to my opponents. Very interesting. Next, we're moving into my fight with Sitmanchai, Thai fighter. I knew he was gonna come out with lots of kicks. Right away, I establish a jab, a long jab. Again, a jab with some punches following. Checking out that distance with that single low kick as I mentioned. That was me right there, just trying to get a feel for him, but also establish this is gonna be more of a boxing fight. I'm not gonna let you get away with making this a tie pace fight with no hands. From here we move on to a fight that was the same night. This was the exact same night against Shane Oblansky. I'd already fought once, moved into the final to win the whole situation and get a glory title shot. This was a big dude. I did no research on him. I set the jab up, come with the low kick, maintaining that range. Very often when people throw a low kick on me, they miss in the opening of the bell. Taking a little more time there. That little clip was very different because I had no prep for this guy. It was just, okay, I won my fight. Who am I fighting next? Oh, it's that guy. So you can see, as I come out right away, my hands are even higher than normal, like way up here. And right away, I'm throwing single shots. I throw the jab. I come with a low kick, getting the head off the center line. I hollow out very often at the beginning because it's just a small amount of distance that needs to be created to evade shots. Now from here, my second glory event. I did a little research for this guy. Come out fairly fast there. He did a nice catch on me there. Setting out those fast punches. I think with that guy, I didn't really believe he had too much to bring for me. I would be able to beat him. There was no real caution there, except for the hands being very high and trying to establish right away that I believe that guy only had three or four week training camp. So I think one of the ideas was to make sure he gets tired, put the pace on him right away. From here, we move into my rematch with Adam Chuck. This will be a very interesting 15 seconds because the first fight was so odd, so frustrating. Let's see how this opening section plays out. Right away, staying outside of range, establishing that round kick, which we worked on. 
taking that angle for the southpaw. I knew that fight was gonna be more calculated, had to be much more thought in the fight. I couldn't rely on cardio or volume. So right away, I'm trying to slow myself down and maintain the range. Always changing, always adapting according to the opponent is the theme I see. Here's another fight from China. Guy came out as a southpaw, which I wasn't expecting based on the fight footage I'd previously seen. So I'm going a little bit slower here, not rushing anything because it's a change up from what I expected. So what can we learn from the first 15 seconds of one dozen of my fights? Well, number one, you need to be very, very aware of defense in the early part of the fight. Like, can you even think of any part of that footage I just showed you where I took a big punch or a kick? No, you won't be able to find it. I land some big punches and kicks, but I am 100% focused on not taking any damage. So I know when I get out of the first 15 seconds, I am safe and I've done some information. I've done some calculations on who I'm facing and what they're gonna bring to defeat me. Usually once you establish range, their power, and just get a tone of whether they're fearful of you or not. From there, it's easy to start making adjustments and start sort of climbing your way, whatever you have to do towards that victory. As I mentioned at the beginning, I do very often throw a single punch and a low kick or just a low kick. That's again, me just seeing what I can do in terms of landing those low kicks, whether he's gonna check, whether he's going to not, and what his range is. Find the low kicks with the head movement, little head movement and a low kick, is a very safe way to start off the fight. And as I've talked about guys, if you do come out with punches, and I did that a couple times, you know, I've run out, bang, bang, bang. We wanna make sure that you're so focused on your defense that it's almost like, okay, this hand's going out, but what is this hand doing? This is the priority hand. This hand's going out, but what is this hand doing? I focus, I'd say, more on my defensive hand than my offensive hand, especially early in the fight. It's an interesting thing to say. You're throwing a punch, but you're thinking defensively. Well, that's why I very rarely take big shots. That's why I'm not concussed loads in my career. And I've had very few headaches from head impact. We're not just talking about fights. We're talking in my whole career all the sparring, all the training, and all the fights because I'm defense oriented almost all the time. And then the one other common theme I saw is if I wanted to increase the pace, I was close, but if I wanted to slow it down, I was back and I was using the front kick just early on to make sure I was gonna be able to maintain a little bit of range, not letting the guy walk straight in. So I hope you guys found that episode interesting. It was something I've been wanting to do for a while, but it just took me a little bit to get the first 15 seconds of those dozen and fights all together and onto my phone so I could watch it and then make the whole video and place it out for you guys. If this was something you guys found helpful, you think it may assist you in your fights, please give the video a like. If you guys haven't already, join the channel and get subscribed. Train hard guys, I'll see you back here soon for another video.